الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين يقول سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. And we ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, his family, his companions, and those that follow until the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, there's a lot that's been going on. And in many cases, the khutbah has become a platform where you are able to gain perspective with everything that's going on. And issues that are relevant to our community for various reasons. Some of them that threaten our community. And Islamophobia and politics and the elections, of course, have a lot to do with that. Some that threaten the family structure. Domestic violence, with which we had another death in the community just last week, just this past week. And there are many other issues that threaten us as an individual that, that constantly need to be spoken about and that need to be amplified from the menbar, from the pulpit. But subhanAllah, there's one issue that is always relevant. And there's one topic that is always relevant to each and every single one of us. And that's death. That's al-maut. It is relevant all the time. It is relevant to you every single day of your life. Why? Because... Today could be your last day. This could be your last week. It could be your last khutbah. If a person was to remember death properly, then it would correct their family lives. It would correct their spiritual lives. It would correct their lives with the community. It would put everything in perspective. And the Prophet ﷺ for that reason used to speak about it so frequently. And the Prophet ﷺ, his khutbahs revolved around Surah Qaf, which constantly bring home this message that each and every single one of us at one point will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would leave this world and practically no one would leave this world when they expect to do so no one and subhanallah we see YouTube videos constantly getting circulated around you see the video of a man who drops dead while he's playing soccer and I remember subhanallah when you know this one of the earliest nasheeds on YouTube and they had this this uh, European soccer player playing and then suddenly he collapses and you have the the nasheed about the angel of death and the nasheed about how death comes and that's a YouTube video and you look at that and you go wow subhanallah and you might circulate that and then subhanallah sometimes the things that you're circulating come back and they happen to you as well earthquakes natural disasters you see this video and you say look at this it's crazy and then next thing you know you're in one of those and that's something that happens many many different times with different things sometimes you're hearing a discussion a lecture on a topic and you think to yourself this has nothing to do with me whatsoever you know alhamdulillah this isn't relevant to me because if it was relevant to me it would be a disaster and they keep on talking about these tragedies and keep on talking about these things. And alhamdulillah, this has nothing to do with me. And the next thing you know, it has everything to do with you. 
when we talk about death and particularly what the Prophet meant, what, meant when he said al mawtul fuja'a a sudden death when death hits you suddenly I want you to think and deeply reflect for a moment in this masjid last week in the khutbah last week there was a brother that was sitting amongst you all last week that's no longer here think about that for a moment as you got ready to come to Jumu'ah today and to get yourself ready for the khutbah today and you came and you took your place at any point today did it occur to you that this might be my last time sitting here that next week the khutbah might not be to me the khutbah might be about me think about that last week a brother was here and he heard the adhan and he heard the khutbah and subhanallah that brother was a brother that used to often give the adhan it was very regular in the masjid and he's not with us anymore brother khuram may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate him and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shahada and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his family steadfastness and may Allah give him all of the ajr of all that he used to do and all that he missed out on Allahumma ameen the point is dear brothers and sisters that doesn't need an elaborate hadith it doesn't need an elaborate ayah it just needs you to think for a moment reflect someone in here might be sitting in the same spot he sat in last week undoubtedly who was here amongst you all last week at Jumu'ah and think about the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us each another day another week another chance to repent another chance to remember him and another chance to come back to him and incline towards him it's constantly relevant to us these things always matter to us the discussion on death should never escape us the thoughts of death should never escape us and the Messenger وسلم, told us that you should increase your remembrance of death the destroyer of pleasures he called it because when that moment comes everything that you enjoy in life is taken away from you and the irony of that is that everything that you enjoy in life is why you don't remember death why we tend to push it away because we're too steeped in our ghafla in our heedlessness so the Prophet said shed off that heedlessness by constantly reminding yourself of death reminding yourself of what how you're gonna die the pain of death am I gonna die in a plane crash in a car accident drowning you know a sudden sudden heart attack a stroke cancer is that what it is the nature of how you're gonna die or the fact that you're no longer going to be here to enjoy those pleasures and they could be taken away from you in one moment and suddenly everything is put back in perspective as Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah said if you viewed every portion of your life through the lens of death then your life would be a testimony for you after your death and not against you but most people view death through the lens of life meaning what they keep on delaying it and they keep on thinking they've cheated it out for another day we fool ourselves with statistics but you know what subhanallah when you're that person the, st the statistics don't matter anymore that you had this much of a chance at this age in this port in this place of getting this disease or dying or so the statistics go out the window don't they and do you really want to be playing with statistics with your fate with your entire akhirah with everything that comes after so he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam akthiru be frequent in your remembrance of hadim al ladhat of the destroyer of pleasures who is he telling this to he's telling it to a community like the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's telling it to the best generation he's telling it to a community that sees death all the time he's telling it to a community that's constantly in battle fending off you know people that are trying to kill them and that have seen their relatives die due to the conflict that they're in and he's telling them you need to remember death more so what then about people that live in such comfort and such convenience that don't go to the baqir every day when they bury their, their, their when they bury their dead that are not constantly praying salat al janazah that don't live in those circumstances anymore you know what then of us and what is the benefit of all of that are we supposed to live like dead people are we supposed to always be depressed 
When the Prophet ﷺ tells the companions, Inni nahaytukum an ziyaratil qubur, I used to forbid you from visiting the graveyard. But he says, Zuruha, go ahead and visit it. Why? To the kirukum bil akhirah. It reminds you of the hereafter. It reminds you that you're not going to be here much longer, that there is something more than this. Now, what is the point of all of that? And how did the Prophet ﷺ and the companions internalize that? Number one. Remembering death should not only be when you directly encounter it. That's the first rule. You have to, you have to force yourself to remember it at times when, you're not in, when it does not encounter you or when you don't encounter it. A time outside of janazah, a time outside of a burial, a time outside of a terminal disease or an illness, a time outside of hearing that someone that you knew passed away, you have to actually bring yourself to remember it outside of those times altogether. And how does that come? Through introspection. Through time for tadabbur and tafakkur. Reflection. Taking time out of life. So whether, whether, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to disconnect from some of the pleasures of life and give yourself a few moments. If you're not taking a few moments on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and whether that remembrance comes through the recitation of the Qur'an, your daily recitation of the Qur'an, or your daily dhikr, where you're, where you're not just saying the words, but you're actually paying attention. Because athkar al-sabah and al-masa, the morning remembrances and the evening remembrances have death in them. And when you recite at the end of your tashahud, every single salah, and you say, أعوذ بك من عذاب النار وعذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات you seek refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave and the punishment of hellfire and from the trials of life and death. There's a remembrance of death. So whether it comes through those moments where you're paying attention or through your daily five pages of Qur'an or ten pages of Qur'an where you're paying attention to the references of death or just sitting with yourself and thinking about the fact that your life is so unpredictable that you don't know if you'll make it to tomorrow Whatever it may be, there has to be time where you take out to actually consciously remember it. That's number one. Number two, the visitation of the graveyard. One of the most neglected sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ. To actually visit it, not for the sake of burying somebody. To actually visit it, to remind yourself of death. And that was why the hukum, that was why the ruling was lifted which prohibited the people from visiting the graveyards outside of the janazah time. Initially in Islam it was prohibited so that people would not do things at the graves that would corrupt their theology. But once the creed of Islam was firm in the hearts of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, then they were encouraged to go there frequently to remember death. And subhanAllah, if you think the janazah is for that person that's passed away, yes it is because the people make dua for them and they seek forgiveness, but it's also for you. It's also for you. It's for you to pay attention too. It's for you to, to actually see that take place too and to sit and reflect when you see a person's body go into the grave that was alive and around you. It's for you to remember that's my place eventually. Number three, and this is perhaps the most important point of the khutbah, and this is what I want to get to. If Allah really wanted us to live our lives in complete fear and have absolutely no appetite for this dunya and have absolutely no joy in this life, Allah would have caused us to be able to hear the punishment of the grave. And that's a very powerful concept that the Prophet ﷺ tells us. That had the Messenger ﷺ not feared that we would not even bury our dead, he would have asked Allah to allow us to hear some of what takes place in the grave, some of what takes place in that realm. Could you imagine if every day as you drive by a graveyard you can hear the, the noises coming from that graveyard? Could you imagine how difficult life would be? You would have no choice but to always remember death. If that's all you heard, if you were hearing that on a daily basis, we would have no ladha anyway. I mean, what pleasure would you have? How do you tune that out? You can't mute that. If we were put in a position where we're hearing that all the time, then we wouldn't even bury our dead. And we'd live our lives just waiting for our turn like paranoid people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed mercy upon us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us that relief. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you need to consciously remember it at times. Had Allah wanted us to live our lives always in that state of fear, not in a healthy sense, but in a state of misery, where we're not able to smile and we're not able to carry on with life, then Allah would have done that to us. But He didn't do that to us. The revelation wasn't sent to depress people. It wasn't sent to put people in a state of anxiety. Death is not to make us always in a state of anxiety. Death is that we know how to prioritize. The remembrance of death is that we know how to properly prioritize our lives. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ did not walk around like people that were dead. They were not zombies. They laughed, they smiled, they found joy in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, but they were never heedless. And that's the point. You have to draw that line between happiness and enjoyment of this life where you're still aware of its reality and when you're in utter complete heedlessness ghafla, where you're not paying attention at all to the reality of your life so you have to find this balance where you're remembering death without dying you're not dead you live like a person who loves what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them but they're not in heedlessness they know that it's only a matter of time and they force themselves to remember that. They force themselves to remember that purpose. Some people look outside and they see nature and they see mashallah or they say it's beautiful and it's a nice day outside. Some people look outside as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِرًا Oh Allah, you did not create this in vain. There is a purpose to this. They look at the sun and the moon, they look at the stars, they look at the trees, they look at everything around them, and it does not just cause them to be in awe of its beauty, it makes them think, there is a purpose. I'm reminded now that I have a purpose. There is a purpose that you have and there is a purpose that I have. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِرًا سُبْحَانَكْ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Glory be to you, how perfect are you, so protect us from the punishment of hellfire. And subhanAllah, every time Allah mentions tadabbur in the Qur'an, contemplation on the ayat around us, on the, on the signs of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a people that are brought to a dua. رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Earlier in Surah Ali Imran, Oh Allah, we believe, we affirm our belief. So forgive us and have mercy upon us and protect us from the punishment. Later on, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِرًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Once again, they're brought to a state of urgency. I remember, I'm reminded that I have a purpose. SubhanAllah, if you listen, there's a beautiful uh, recording which uh, you, you'd be able to find it online between uh, Muhammad Ali rahimahullah ta'ala and his daughter, young daughter. And he's reminding her, do you know why Allah created you? Do you know why you're here? What's your purpose? He's saying this to his daughter. She was only four years old and he's talking to her on the phone. He was trying to remind, what's your purpose in life? What are you here for? And what does that bring us to? Realization. Not depression. Not paranoia. Realization. I'm supposed to be acting in a different way. How can I wrong someone with my tongue? When I know that Allah might call me to account now, how can I wrong my family? When I know that I might not have a chance to make things better with them. How can I disregard my Jum'ah when I know that it might be my last Jum'ah? How can I disregard my Salah and how I'm doing my prayer when I know it might be my last prayer? How can I disregard these things when I know that this might be my last chance? And so the reminder is very simple today. أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَادِمِ اللَّذَّاتِ Frequent the reminder of death. Let it be frequent in your life where you're thinking about it in a way that's productive, in a way that makes you think, how do I want to leave this world? Not in a way that kills you, in a way that makes you value life more, in a way that makes you treat your life better and treat everything that Allah gave you as an amana in this life in a better way. That's the remembrance of the Prophet ﷺ. Not the despair. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he saw a man who was staring at the graves. And this man was crying in a state of despair. And while he was staring at the graves, and he was crying, he missed Salat al-Dhuhr. 
So, SubhanAllah, think about the irony of this. And this is not our situation. This is to show you the other side now. He missed Salat al dhuhr So Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah went up to him and he told him, what's the point of remembering death if you're going to miss Salat al dhuhr He said, what's the point of praying if this is our end? That's an unproductive way of thinking about death. Many of you in here love that brother that passed away because of the way that he treated you. And he's remembered in khair, inshaAllah. And we bear witness that what we saw of him was a righteous man. And even if you encountered him in a little bit, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you see someone frequenting the masjid, فَاشْهَدُوا لَهُ iman, Then bear witness to that person of faith. You are a witness to that person on the Day of Judgment. If the only thing you used to see from that brother is salam and you know, salat al-fajr and salat al-maghrib and isha, that's enough for you to be a witness for that person on the Day of Judgment. If it went further, alhamdulillah. But if you saw him in the masjid, and we used to see that brother in the masjid, and wallahi, it's my first time giving khutbah, and he's not here, it feels empty, right? That's enough for people to bear witness for him. Many of you knew that brother, knew brother Khuram very well. And obviously he leaves a void, and he left the gap in the masjid, and, in, and of course with his family, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them, with his social life. But everyone would bear witness to the khair of that person, to the good of that person. Meaning his life was not in vain. Allah did not create him batila, in vain. Yes, he died young, but Allah didn't create him in vain. He had a purpose, and we ask Allah that he fulfilled that purpose. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to see the reward of that purpose. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to realize our purpose and to one day see the reward of our purpose as well. And we ask Allah to forgive us for our heedlessness, for our shortcomings. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li ulaikum wa li sa'ad al-muslimin fastaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Allahumma khfir al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat Wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat Al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat Innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat Allahumma khfir lana wa rahamna Wa afu anna wa la tu'adhibna Rabbana zalamna anfusana Wa inna mtakhfir lana wa tarhamna La nakunanna min al-khasirin La ilaha illa anta subhanaka Inna kunna min al-zalimin لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصر المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة